An amine can undergo elimination to form an alkene. This reaction is referred to as the Hoffman elimination, and it is just a standard E2 elimination reaction, although it is a little bit trickier than other E2 reactions we've looked at, so it is actually going to be a two-step process. We are gonna look at the mechanism for this reaction. Before we do that, I wanna point out that the major product of this reaction is the least substituted alkene. Let's take a look at how this elimination takes place. So first of all, the amine group, the NH2 group in this particular molecule is a terrible leaving group. And so the first thing that we have to do with this reaction is convert the amine into a better leaving group. And we're gonna do that by alkylating it. The standard for alkylating for a Hoffman elimination reaction is to use excess methyl iodide. This is alkylation of amine, a reaction that we learned just recently, so just a few videos ago. When we use excess, alkyl halide such as methyl iodide with an amine what we are going to do is put as many of those methyl groups as possible on the nitrogen we're going to get rid of every single hydrogen that's there and then add a fourth bond as well so this is going to make an ammonium ion a quaternary ammonium ion with the counter ion being the iodide ion and we're actually going to write that down because that's going to be kind of important so this, what we've done here, um, is a, a really good leaving group. It's just going to eliminate as uh, a tertiary amine. Um, unfortunately, iodide is not a good base, so the iodide ion cannot be used to do the elimination reaction, like, so we can't just get going like that. What we do need to do here is to get a better base into this, into this system so that we can do the elimination. And the way that we get a better base in there is with silver oxide, Ag2O, um, in some water. So there's a couple of things that are going to happen when we add silver oxide. First of all, the silver ion is going to react with the iodide ion and produce silver iodide, AGI, which is an insoluble solid. So that's going to precipitate out of solution. As the silver ions are combining with the iodide ions to make that AGI, uh, we're also going to synthesize hydroxide ions at the same time from the remainder of the silver oxide molecule. And that hydroxide ion, as you know, is an awesome base. So the hydroxide ion then is going to come in and it's gonna grab a hydrogen from the correct position to give us the least substituted alkene. So out here on the end, the carbon hydrogen electrons are gonna come in to make the double bond. And then we will kick off the leaving group, which is for this molecule is an N, CH33. I'm going to go ahead and write that leaving group, even though normally we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't show that. Um, so let's look at just a, a couple of specific examples. Oh, and let me write our step two reagents here. So our step two reagents are the silver oxide, water, and a lot of times a little bit of heat is necessary to kind of help this reaction move along. So let's look at just two straightforward examples without drawing the mechanism. If we have this six-membered ring with an alkene, we use excess methyl iodide followed by silver oxide, water, and heat. We're just going to get rid of that uh, NH2 group and make an alkene. Let's do one more example so we can practice thinking about the least substituted alkene. Same reagents again, excess CH3I followed by Ag2O in water with heat. We know that we're going to be eliminating the NH2 group. So the carbon that was holding the NH2 group, this carbon right here does need to be part of the carbon-carbon double bond. Our carbon-carbon double bond could go this way or it could go this way. And this way is exactly the same as going this way. We want the, the least substituted alkene. This is a tertiary alkene. This would be a secondary alkene. So that's definitely what we want to make. And there's the product for that reaction.